What's up, everybody? We have some new developments in the Karen Reed retrial. While prosecutor Adam Lally is not necessarily out fully, but there is a new man in. Brand new prosecutor who it seems will be the lead prosecutor for the retrial of Karen Reed. We're going to do a deep dive and find out what we can find out about him and what's out there on the internet about this new lawyer. We're going to listen to what Mr. Morrissey had to say about this new lawyer. We're going to read the first quote from this new lawyer and how he thinks and feels about this case. And we'll also discuss what it means for Lally and the prosecution team as a whole, as far as how they did the first time and how unusual this is to go from a hung jury to a brand new lawyer on the case by choice, by choice. The prosecution did this. So we're going to take a look today. Make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is just uh, what the announcement kind of sounded like. Norfolk District Attorney Michael Morrissey announced Wednesday that he has appointed a special prosecutor to try Karen Reed at her second trial. Reed is scheduled for a second murder trial on January 27, 2025. So if you want to know what a special prosecutor is, it's basically not somebody that is a current prosecutor, not a current district attorney um, or U.S. attorney. They get somebody from the outside, bring them in. Usually it's a defense attorney. Usually it's somebody that's a former prosecutor. Sometimes it's a former judge that's now a lawyer again. There's all sorts of different reasons, but it's usually to bring in the big guns and have somebody outside look at this and not just have your average everyday assistant district attorney or assistant state attorney handle this case. Prosecutors Adam Lally and Laura McLaughlin handled the case back in spring of 2024. Now, special, a special assistant district attorney Hank Brennan, that is his name, Hank Brennan, will lead, not just join, but lead the prosecution for Reed's second trial. And he will work with Lally McLaughlin and Caleb Schillinger. And here's the quote. Attorney Brennan is a highly respected and skilled former prosecutor and a longtime defense attorney with over 25 years of experience in state and federal courts, sounds like a big dog, has expertise handling complex law enforcement matters. It's interesting that he would throw that out there, complex law enforcement matters. What's complex about these law enforcement issues? Um, Norfolk DA Michael Morrissey wrote in a statement, and he's represented some famous, uh, we're going to look at his quote later, he's represented some famous uh, mob boss, whitey, Bulger, Bueller, Bulger, I don't know who it is before my time, but apparently part of the mob situation there, he represented him, lost, the guy went to prison, died in prison, brutally at the hands of other people in prison, you know, probably some mob wars and stuff. I don't know enough about it to really dive into it, but he has absolutely handled some very high profile cases, especially on the criminal defense side, which is what he's been doing for a number of years. So we're going to do now what we always do when a new lawyer comes on the case, if it is available. Um, and this case it is, and we are going to take a look at his website. How does he present himself to the public? How does he present himself to potential future clients? Uh, first, let's take a look. Hank Brennan is a highly experienced attorney with a demonstrated record of successfully defending all types of criminal cases from the common to the most complex. Attorney Brennan has effectively represented hundreds of clients and has tried and won over a hundred cases demonstrating remarkable success in the state and federal courts. So just so you know, a um, couple things. No criminal defense attorney wins all their cases. That's not what he's saying here. He has won a lot. Um, demonstrating remarkable success does not always mean you go to trial and you win, right? It doesn't always mean that. Sometimes it's getting a good deal. Sometimes it's getting a hung jury or a mistrial that you get a good deal on later. Sometimes it's getting charges reduced. Sometimes it's getting some charges dropped and not others. Um, sometimes it's just making the state go and prove their burden and protecting your client's constitutional rights. So remarkable success can look different in a number of ways. It doesn't mean a lawyer should win every single case. Frankly, any criminal defense lawyer that says they've won every case they've ever tried, I either don't believe them or they're not trying enough cases. Uh, his commitment to his clients, his knowledge of the law, and his extraordinary trial skills have consistently delivered positive outcomes to those navigating some of the most difficult circumstances of their lives. He brings a deep commitment to each and every case and his clear and careful guidance has helped those who have already experienced, sorry, who have had experience in the legal system and who are facing their first time in court. Here are some of the areas of practice. White collar crimes, bank fraud, money, 
Violent crimes, that's what this would be categorized under. Sex crimes, RICO, probation violation, murder, here we go. Motor vehicle crimes, here we go. Those are right up this alley. Now, again, he's not defending them, he's prosecuting them, but he has plenty of experience. Internet crimes, so we know there's going to be, that's not what this is, but there's technical aspects to this, and he has probably dealt with technical experts. I would almost guarantee he's dealt with technical experts in dealing with these types of crimes. Clerk hearings, federal crimes, DUI and OUI. We know that's going to be part of this case. Drug crimes, domestic crimes. While there's not domestic crimes, there are domestic issues in this case. Personal injury. Attorney Brennan has been recognized by super lawyers of Massachusetts and has been named as one of the country's top 100 trial lawyers by National Trial Lawyers Association. He also serves as an adjunct professor of law teaching trial practice at Suffolk University Law School and is a frequent lecturer to other lawyers and students in trial practice. Okay, super lawyer, uh, top trial lawyer getting the awards. They're not the most important thing, but it is good to have, right? Especially super lawyers and best lawyers. Those are the two best, in my opinion. They're peer voted on and you can't just buy into those. Um, National Trial Lawyers is a good one as well. Um, we're members in all of those, my dad, Pete and I as well. Um, and those are always, you know, some of the good ones. There are millions of awards. You can buy them. They're not the most important thing in the world, but it's better to have them than not to have them. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. And usually clients like to see it and can go in there and look at the peer review, people in your community, people you've gone up against, people you've worked with, even judges sometimes can be um, making their comments and peer reviews in there to help people get in or stay out of some of these and super lawyers and best lawyers are two of those. All right. So next, let's take a look at his first statement, at least that I've seen. And this is from Christina Rex, who has been somebody to follow uh, through all the Karen Reed sagas. Attorney Brennan said on his appointment, I assume full responsibility and all obligations for prosecuting this case and will do so meticulously, ethically, and zealously without compromise. Okay. I love that. I love the fact that he's saying I'm taking full responsibility and I'm going to do this meticulously, ethically, and zealously. I hope he does. And I hope when he looks through it, I don't know if he, there's no way he's looked through everything yet. I shouldn't say no way. I wouldn't think he's looked through everything yet. He's probably looked through some stuff. And if he finds that certain evidence is not reliable or certain experts are just flat out wrong or certain witnesses cannot be trusted, that he does not call them. I hope he doesn't. I hope he only presents what he finds to be reliable, ethical, and appropriate, relevant evidence in this case. I hope he only prosecutes the crimes that he feels are appropriate. He can have a say. He doesn't necessarily have the final say. That's probably Morrissey, but he can have a say and recommend to Morrissey potentially. I think we should drop counts one and three. From my personal opinion, from what I know about the case, which again, he's going to know a lot more than I know when he digs into all of this. I would recommend that. If I was coming on to be the special prosecutor, I would recommend dropping counts one and three. Maybe he will do that. Maybe he won't. But now he's saying, I am taking full responsibility. That means any of the garbage or problems or unethical things that may have come up or around last trial, he's saying, I'm not going to do that this trial. I'm handling things ethically. And this is a criminal defense attorney. This is not a career prosecutor. This is not a lifelong prosecutor that has to make keep prosecutors happy. Frankly, he's probably fought with plenty of prosecutors. Now, of course, I'm not from Boston. I don't know if he has connections to anybody involved. I don't know if he has connections to Morrissey, to the judge, to any of the witnesses, to the victim, to the defendants, to the defense attorneys. I have no idea. I have no idea. I will say it's likely that him and Yanetti run in the same circles. I don't know that to be true, but just knowing how it is with local and statewide uh, defense bars, I guess is they know each other and they run in some of the same circles and deal with some of the same issues and have shared notes on cases about prosecutors, maybe even Lally. I don't know. He says, I have two core obligations. The first is to make certain that Karen Reed receives a fair trial. Now, people can be skeptical. They can say, I don't believe this guy. This guy sucks, whatever. Why would he ever take this job? This would be a good way to help the situation. Maybe he believes it was involuntary. Maybe he believes it was DUI. Maybe he believes different things. Maybe he doesn't believe a second degree. I don't know. But he is saying he is committed to making sure she has a fair trial. Now, do prosecutors say that and then step all over it? Sure. Does law enforcement do that sometimes? Sure. But at least he's saying it. He doesn't have to. I'm glad he's saying it. 
I'm hopeful that he is going to make everything fair. And maybe the trial will look very different than it did last time. Miss Reed will receive the dignity. Dignity. We know what Proctor said. We know what some of those other witnesses said about her. We know the insinuations that came. Was that dignified? He says she's going to receive the dignity and fairness that every defendant deserves in our criminal justice system. I couldn't agree more. She should be treated with dignity and fairness. She is presumed innocent. In fact, some would argue, including myself, two of the three charges, she is innocent. I shouldn't say innocent. She should. She is legally not guilty if the jury, in fact, voted 12 to 0. So he may see her as not guilty on those two. I don't know. We'll see. I think a good legal argument could be made for that. And count two is absolutely legally fair game. I know people are going to disagree with that and hate on that. But legally speaking, it seems like even more of the jury was in favor of guilty. That is fair game to retry. And obviously, legally speaking, all three are fair game because nobody has thrown out counts one and three, although there is an ongoing appeal. But I'm glad he's saying he's going to treat her with dignity and fairness. That's how every criminal defendant should be looked at. And I don't think, and you can say, of course, roll your eyes at that. I don't think every prosecutor feels that way about every criminal defendant. All right, so he has two core obligations. That's one, fair trial, dignity, fairness. The second core obligation is to ensure that the facts surrounding John O'Keefe's death are fully and fairly aired in the courtroom without outside influence. Good. No outside influence from either side. Do your job as a prosecutor. I don't care how loud anybody or anything is, including myself. You got to do your job. You got to do what's right, what's dignified, what's fair, and what's just as a prosecutor in this case. I guarantee that I will work tirelessly with the trial team to prepare this case for trial in January of 2025. That's about four months, which is enough time if you're going to dedicate your time to this. It's very interesting. I would love to know the, the deal, right? Like, what's he getting paid? How's he handling his other caseload? Because he's got to put some of that in the background, paying clients that have hired him as their criminal defense attorney to handle this case. I, I would be interested, although it's between him and the state and his clients. None of my business. So this is what he says. So the last part of the video now is what does this mean for Lally? What does this mean for Karen Reed and her defense team? What does this mean for the second trial? Well, Lally handled, I think, every witness, if not every witness, every important or large witness, he handled in the trial himself. I don't expect Brennan to handle every single witness. I expect Lally to still handle some witnesses. I would expect Brennan to streamline the trial a little bit, to not ask as much repetition, to set it up more like a private criminal defense attorney would, not to overtry the case, but just to bring forth what's important. I personally expect the presentation of the evidence to be better this time around, to be cleaner, to get more to the point, to make their strongest arguments and maybe throw the bad arguments away again and maybe even throw some of the charges away. To my, in my opinion, if strategically I was trying to win this case and I was the new special prosecutor on the case, I would, even if I thought, that the jury did not vote 12-0. Even if I thought that was hogwash and juries coming out after the fact, I would absolutely get rid of murder too. Absolutely get rid of second degree. I think there's no way they can prove motive in this case. I think trying to prove motive only loses credibility with the jury. That's my opinion. I would focus on involuntary manslaughter. It was accidental. She didn't mean to, but she figured it out as time went by and some of the evidence that they have to show that, use the car data to say, you know, she was backing up. She was mad. She was going to speed out of there. That's what I would focus on personally if I'm trying to look at my best chance to win and what, if you want to say what the facts might ethically point to, I just don't think they point to second degree. I don't know how they prove she intended and knew that she did it, especially with the timelines and everything else. I would let the defense run wild with their conspiracy theory and I would not give them a lot of time. I would not take half the trial defending the witnesses in this case. That's not how I would try it if I was the special prosecutor. I don't know what he's going to do, but that would obviously look very, very different than how Lally tried the case. I'll also say, there's no way that this is a vote of confidence in Adam Lally. There's no way to say, wow, you did such an amazing job the first time around that you're out or severely diminished the second time around. It is so unusual to take the extra time and resources and just like literally money 
to bring someone else in to do a job somebody else is already fully prepared for. We talked about it on the defense side. If Karen Reed was going to have to hire other lawyers, how expensive, how hard it would be, how you wouldn't want to do that. You're probably going to be better the second time around. They're like, well, we don't think Lally's going to be better the second time around. We think Brennan's going to be better his first time around. I also think this opens up the world of potential different experts. Does Brennan know some accident reconstructionists? Is he going to bring in some of his own experts, some non-cop law enforcement experts? You can call them hired guns. You can call them less, uh, you can call them more colorful words of when you hire somebody to pay to say whatever you want them to say. But will they be better? Will they be more presentable? The defense is still going to have the third party on bias, which if you listen to some of the jury interviews, they didn't even fully understand what that meant. They still kind of held it against the defense or thought the defense came up with them. So how can they bear that out differently or present that differently? I would try to say they were hired by a third-party law enforcement agency. That's what I would try to say. I think it's fair game, and it lets them know that it's law enforcement that hired them, not us. Not anybody connected with or affiliated with the defense. I think this trial is going to look different. I think the second trial is going to look very different. I think he may have different experts. I think he's going to call maybe some different witnesses or at least a different order of the witnesses. I think... I don't know what he's going to do, obviously, but like, I'm just thinking if it was me, I would focus less on defending all the witnesses and focus less on trying to prove intent and instead prove this is the most plausible thing that happened in that yard. That's what I would try to go with if I was him. You're going to have to deal with the cover-ups and the bad evidence gathering. I don't know how he's going to do that, right? He's a defense attorney now. This is what he does in every case is pick apart investigations, pick apart the way evidence was gathered, pick apart the chain of custody. So I can't wait to hear how he explains away so obviously horrible evidence collection and chain of custody. How is he going to just explain that away or act like it's no big deal? If you're a prosecutor, most of the time you're like, yeah, cops never do anything wrong. But when you're a criminal defense attorney for 25 years or whatever this guy has been, you've spent most of your career picking apart these exact actions. So how is he going to ethically and fairly and morally put this forward as legitimate evidence the jury should consider as reliable? I'm very interested to see how he does it. I, I would keep it simple. I would keep it simple. I would make, you know, the defense theory look wild and outlandish. Strategically speaking, right? I'm not talking about, you know, what I believe happened or anything like that. I'm just talking about strategically speaking because that's a question a lot of you had is, what would you do? Because he's a private attorney now coming in, former prosecutor, if you were in his shoes. So that's kind of what I'm talking about here. And I am fascinated. I have to be honest. I'm fascinated with this appointment. Again, love him or hate him. I think it was the right move by Morrissey to do. I do not think it's going to go worse than how Lally presented the last case. I think their chances have gone up. What those chances are, I don't know. But this jury is only going to see this case. Highly doubtful the defense is going to be like, well, if you don't call them, we're going to call all 100 witnesses to talk about whatever and to repeat the same information over and over again. I don't think they're going to do that. It's going to look like wasting the jury's time. It's going to be annoying. It's going to seem repetitive and cumulative. I don't think these are those types of defense attorneys. I think they're only calling what they think is important and relevant. They did keep it simple, as simple as they could with their theory. I would love to give Jackson and Yanetti some truth serum to think if they think this is going to go better or worse, if this was a good or bad thing for them. I'm sure they're going to say publicly, doesn't matter. Actually, I'm sure they're going to say publicly if I was them. I, again, I don't know this guy, Brennan, but assuming he doesn't have these same connections and same biases or whatever as some of the other law enforcement and people involved, they may say, good, we're happy because now we have an ethical prosecutor on the case, somebody who's going to look at it fairly, and we think the first thing he should do is drop counts one and three. I may come out and publicly say that if I'm Unity and Jackson. This defense attorney should know if this happened to one of his clients what the right thing to do should be. And he should do it in this case, get rid of counts one and three. We'll see if the media is used at all. Also, being a high-profile criminal defense attorney now as a prosecutor, will he talk to the media? What's appropriate for him to do there? All big questions, but I don't see how Adam Lally could spin this positively. I do not think this is good for him. I do not think it shows any confidence in him. I think they realize it did not go well the first time around, and they need to do better this time around if they want to win. But I'm hopeful that he'll look at the case and he'll do what he thinks is right. And he'll put himself in the shoes of the defendant and the defense attorneys, which so many of his clients are. And we'll see.
I can't wait to see how this unfolds. You guys let me know what your thoughts are, what your questions are, how you think this goes. What do you think this means for Adam Lally? Do you agree with the decision if you're on the prosecution side? What do you think about it if you're on Karen Reed's side? I know there's splits. Let's try to keep it respectful, not be divisive. Let's hear out both sides and hear how people view this move and hear how people view this change. Is it good as bad? There are some people that loved Lally and thought Lally crushed and did a great job. So are you nervous now with a new appointment? I, I want to hear. I want to know. I'm just giving you a lawyer's perspective on you know what I think it means and what I'm looking forward to seeing in the second trial. So hit that like button. Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments. That's all we got. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out The Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tregos, The Lawyer You Know.